Dr. Mindy here, and on this video, I'm gonna start teaching you straight out of Fast Like a Girl, and what one of the questions so many of you are struggling with and ask me so often is what pulls you out of a fasted state? Let's dive into the, the topic of this video. So many of you have asked me what breaks a fast, and I know it's really hard. You know, a lot of times if you go and listen to me, the answers, um, are not direct because here's why. What breaks a fast for you and what breaks a fast for me may be totally different. So let's use coffee as an example. A lot of people can drink coffee in their fasted window and they're amazed and do well. Like it actually will bring their blood sugar levels down. Like we know with autophagy that um, it actually certain, or with coffee, certain coffees will stimulate autophagy. So that's really cool. Um, but do we know if it's right for you? Is it right for every individual? Does it mean because coffee is uh, stimulating autophagy that everybody should be drinking coffee in their fasted state? And the answer is no. So in the book, I put all the troubleshooting questions that many of you have asked me, and I put them all into a couple of different sections. But one of the sections that was really important for me to put into this book was what breaks a fast and how to break a fast. So when you get your book, you will see, and I don't know when you are, are reading this, but or listening to this on page 154, I have a whole section on what pulls you out of a fasted state. And I also have, many of you have asked me about the blood sugar test. So there is a blood sugar test that we mapped out here on one page 156 that'll show you how to measure your blood sugar so you know what pulled you out of a fasted state. But here's why it's variable. There's two things that determine if a, a drink, a food pulls you out. One is your microbiome. So it's really fascinating to me that we put so much emphasis in the healthcare system into our human cells um, when we are 10 times more bacteria. So when you have a diverse microbiome, those good bacteria, those bacteria that are, that are providing neurotransmitters for you, that are breaking hormones down, they also regulate your blood sugar. So think about this, let me make it very applicable to you. If you've been on multiple rounds of antibiotics, if you're a woman that has been on birth control for decades, there's really a good chance that your microbiome is not diverse. So you, we have trillions of bacteria in our gut and we need all the different species of bacteria to be able to help regulate blood sugar. So what we want to do is, and this is part of why I teach you so much in the book about eating to support this, these key bacteria, but we want to look at the bio-individuality of blood sugar based off through the lens of our microbiome. So I tell a story of blood sugar and the microbiome in here that I've had, and I just want to share a little bit with you, is that when I first wore a continuous glucose monitor, um, my blood sugar would elevate pretty dramatically anytime I ate something, specifically protein. And it would take a couple hours for it to go down. And this was about five, six years ago. Um, so I would see that I would have a protein rich meal and then it took two to three hours to go down, which is a little bit of a challenge. You want your blood sugar to drop within you know, a couple of hours, like less than two hours. And mine on a protein rich meal was taking about two and a half hours to come down. So what I did is that I started doing more fasts, like the 24 hour fast that re-patterns your microbiome. I started focusing on what to break my fast with, the three Ps and with more protein. I, I teach that in the book. And um, I found that with fasting over repetition of those 24 hour fasts, repetition of being really conscious about what brings my, um, that what to break my fast with, I found that my whole microbiome changed and that now when I put a continuous glucose monitor on, I actually can eat protein and my blood sugar will actually go down. Like if I have like a, um, a patty, a burger patty, and I wrap that in lettuce, my blood sugar goes down with that. And that's all because I've used the principles that I teach in this book on how to repair your microbiome. 
So when we look at what pulls us out of a fasted state, we have to look at the possibility that a very depleted microbiome may be causing your blood sugar to rise in the fasting window, even with something as simple as a cup of coffee. So the first thing to know is your microbiome matters. Second thing is we all have different insulin resistance levels. So depending on how insulin resistant you are, will tell you how a food will work in your fasted state. So think of it like this, and I put this, this is like the second, I put a whole thing on the microbiome and I have a whole thing on what makes you insulin resistant. But again, for the sake of this video, I wanna make it very applicable. So think about it that, like this, if you are massively insulin resistant, when you go into these fasted states, what's gonna happen is that your insulin could spike with the littlest thing. So think about this with um, stevia. Oh my gosh, so many of you have asked me about stevia and for years, we had debates here on, on, in the comments on YouTube. We've had debates about does stevia pull you out uh, of fasting window or not? And everybody had a different response because everybody's microbiome was different and everybody's insulin resistant degree was different. So if you are massively insulin resistant and you would know this because usually new, new fasters can be a little more insulin resistant, what we know is that you're gonna have a spike in insulin even with chewing gum. I've seen it even in people drinking water, they'll have an insulin spike. So when we first move into building a fasting lifestyle, what I want you to be aware of is probably if you are seeing spikes in your blood sugar in that fasted window, what I want you to remember is that it may be just because you have an imbalanced microbiome and you are insulin resistant. The combination of those two might make you hypersensitive to your insulin reacting to anything. So in order to really understand what you can have in your fasting window, you wanna understand your microbiome and you wanna understand your degree of insulin resistance, which is, makes it very personal and unique to you. Okay, I gotta interrupt this video because I have a free guide for you so you can master fasting. It's called a beginner's guide to a fasting lifestyle. And all you've gotta do is click here and you can jump right in. So how do you understand those two things? Things. Well, this is where we have to look at a blood sugar test. So let's use it your, your, your cup of coffee, for example. If you wanna know if coffee works in your fasted state, you would do take, take a blood sugar reading, whatever it is, drink your cup of coffee, and a half an hour later, take another blood sugar reading. I put, I put that exact thing in the book. What you wanna see is within a half an hour, you wanna see after that drink, you wanna see that your blood sugar is at the same level as it was before you had the drink. If those are opposite, like if this second reading is too high, then that drink pulled you out of a fasted state. Now here's what I want you to know and where this bio-individuality of the microbiome and insulin resistance comes in, is let's say you do this test and tomorrow you drink your cup of coffee. And you're like, oh man, like I, it pulled me out of a, a fasted state. I guess I never can have coffee in my fasted window. No, that's not the case. Just like the story that I share with you and hear about how my microbiome changed the more I fasted, your microbiome is gonna change as well. So for now, it might be that you pull, you don't drink coffee, um, but it doesn't mean it's gonna be that way in a month from now. So keep with testing your favorite things in your fasted window. So your favorite drinks. Now, what pulls you out of a fasted state is anything that raises your blood sugar. So that's why we do that blood sugar test. But what raises your blood sugar is your microbiome diversity and your degree of insulin resistance, which is why I put that uh, in the book so we can start to help you figure out how to make fasting bio-individual to you. So I hope that helps. This is a, one of the most important concepts of fasting is understanding what to do in that fasting window. For most people, this is me included, a lot of our members of our Reset Academy, they just drink water that's and, and coffee. 
Coffee tends to work for most people. Um, tea can work as well. Mineral water can work. Element packs can work. But I really want you to understand that if you've been on a lot of antibiotics, if you've been on a lot of birth control over the years, um, if you know you're pretty insulin resistant, you're just gonna need to keep playing with these principles to get those drinks to work well for you in your fasted state. Okay, are you fasting and you're still not losing weight? Check out this video because you might be missing a key part of your fasting experience that's gonna unlock weight loss. So if you think about it, all the humans that emerged out of that time have the gene that allows us to go without food and that gene they believe is in all of us today. 